And so the final part of the 1991 paper one numbers 18 to 20. So first number 18. So again, pause, do the question, and then check against the video. So number 18, part A, show that this expression, 2 cos 2x minus cos squared x equals this, 1 minus 3 sin squared x. Now it's not an equation to be solved, to try and find what x is to make both sides the same. They're always the same, it's an identity. And again, yes, these x's are meant to be in degrees, and I should really be putting the big degrees signs in, but I'm just going to have to be naughty there. Now, the way that you show this is, take this side, calling it the left-hand side, and work on it until it ends up looking like this. So you take the left-hand side, which just now reads 2 cos 2x minus cos squared x. And then you have to figure, what would I need to do to make it look like this? Well, the first thing you notice, I don't want any cosses, so I'm going to have to do some changing. Well, there's a formula for cos 2x. Cos 2x, if you want sines, is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And there's another one with cos squared. Sine squared plus cos squared makes 1, which means cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. So from the set of cos squared, I can write 1 minus sine squared. And then tidy it up. 2 minus 4 sine squared x, although I know that's not really tidying it up, plus sine squared x, but this bit is. So that's 2 take away 1 is 1, minus 4, plus 1, minus 3. So that's it done. So now I'll say equals right hand side, and that's part A. Part B says, hence, in bold, solve this equation. 2 cos 2x minus cos squared x equals 2 sin x. Now unless you're a goldfish, you'll remember that. There it was. So I can replace it with 1 minus 3 sine squared x equals 2 sine x. And that's instantly recognisable as a quadratic. I've got a squared term, a term on its own, and a numerical term. So I'll rearrange that, take over to this side though, to make it formally look like a quadratic equation. 3 sine squared x plus 2 sine x minus the 1 equals 0. Given that it works, although you can just quickly check the discriminant, it can only be 3 sin x times sin x, it can only be 1 times 1, and the positive middle goes to the greater product, the outer one, so that'll have to be a negative, which means the two solutions are going to be either. This is responsible for it equal to 0, so sin x equals a third, or this is responsible for the factor equal to 0, in which case sin x equals negative 1. And then there's two different techniques. This is the easier one, because that's just on the axis. You just think of the graph for this. Same curve looks like this. If I'm looking for ones or zeros or negative ones, the curve tells me immediately. Well, it tells me them all, in fact. So at negative one, I'm looking at 270. So for this part, x is 270. For this part, though, x equals negative a third. Sorry, x equals a third. My two answers are going to be here. So I'll have to find what that part comes to. So the acute angle for that, when you put it into your calculator, is 19.5. So I've got 19.5 degrees to put in the correct places. Now, I'll mention this some other time. I have to just accept that the majority of you will be using that cast the all sine tan cos diagram. And having found the acute angle, will then say, well, if the sign's positive, I'm either going to be here or here. So you put that acute angle into one of those two places which means that x is either going to be 19.5 or take it away from 180, 160.5. Given the final answer, x is equal to, in order, 19.5, although I should really check to begin with the, sort of the range of answers. It might be up to 360, it might just be up to 180, but it is up to 360. So it's 19.5, 160.5, and 270. That was question 18. So now try question 19. Pause and try it. Number 19. Diagram, which I've copied there, shows part of the graph of y equals a to the x squared, where a is greater than 0. If a had been a fraction, it would have gone the opposite way. Since it's a number greater than 1, it's going to increase with higher powers. Uh, part A says, 
if the point 1 t is on the curve, write down the value of t, well let's just feed it into the equation, saying that's a coordinate equation. So that means 1 goes in for x, t goes in for y. So t will equal a to the 1, which means t is just equal to a. The other point was, it says if u1 lies in the graph, find the value of u. Well that just means u goes in for x, 1 moves in for y. So 1 equals a to the u. Well, something to the power of 0 gives 1, which means u equals 0. Right, part B, which I can just do here. Make a copy, done it. Sketch the graph of a to the 2x. Now it's a to the 2x, not y equals 2a to the x. It's not changing the answers, it's changing the input. So the effect's going to take place across the way. It's the opposite, it's the inverse of the operation or operations which are acting on x. So if it's a to the 2x, it's going to compress it by 2. So everything's going to move in. Whatever distance it was, it's going to become half the distance. Which means here, it's going to be a point that was further out that was lower down. So it'll be lower and sharper. Overall, you could just say the gradients will be steeper. But it'll still be the same on that axis. Well, there's a pretty bad curve. So y equals a to the 2x. What's the next part? Part C. Find the course of the point, the intersection of a to the 2x with the line x equals 1. So there's a line, x equals 1, and there's a point of intersection. Well, we just put that down then. So if x equals 1, that means that you've got, for this part, y is going to equal a to the 2 times 1. Because 1's going to place of x. So that just means y is going to be a squared which means the point of intersection will be 1 a squared. Or you could say since it's t, 1 t squared. But I'll probably just stick with 1 a squared. And that's question 19. And the final question. Looks quite big, but it's not really. So pause and try question 20. And so number 20, the last one in paper 1. This was a two-hour paper, paper 1. And big pictures, but there's not a lot in this. Part 1 just describes the, the actual question, although it's only the maths that's actually relevant. So we've got a curve with this equation. 8 plus 5 cos a half x. And the second part says, right, <clears throat> this little train of cars that have gone up this roller coaster. Well, they're buckets of coal to me, but no matter. It says, the angle of the base of them is the same as the angle of the tangent. They're parallel. And as soon as you've got things like that and it's talking about angles and it's talking about gradients, you know you're going to be using m equals tan a at some point. Right, and the other thing is, as soon as you've got an equation, you know that the derivative of that equation will be the equation of the gradients. So the first thing to do with this question, if you look at anything else really, is to say dy by dx equals, and then differentiate it. Well, the eight's constant, so that can go cos goes to negative sine, so it'll be negative the sine of a half x. I know there's a five there. In a function, different derivative of that is a half, so it's a half times the five, so I'll write that as five up in two. So there's the derivative. And of course, the derivative of that is the same as the gradient. So I'll say the gradient will equal the derivative at all points in the curve, and in this particular case, will equal negative 5 upon 2 sine a half of whatever that x coordinate is and that x coordinate is 7 pi upon 6 7 to the 7 pi upon 3 so that gives me negative 5 upon 2 inverse sine 7 pi upon 6 <coughs> then part after that would be well, what that out 7 pi upon 6 what's that then? 7 pi upon 6, you, the curve tells you it's going to be a negative answer, so this is going to turn out positive. <coughs> That's going to be 30 degrees beyond it, so it's going to be the negative of 30 degrees. And I know that the sine of 30 is a half, but you're probably going to do all sine cat tan cos. Think of that as going all the way around to here, leaving you with 30 degrees. I know I'm just using that in degrees, whereas this is all expressed in terms of radians. And then if you can't remember sine 30, 
you'd make the little triangle, 1, 2, root 3, sine, the one opposite without sine the angle, so that's 1 over 2, but it's negative, all sine, tan, cos, but the graph shows you, times negative a half, which gives you positive, so the gradient is positive 5 upon 4. So the gradient at that point, at the point P, is 5 upon 4, which means the angle it makes to the horizontal will be given by this then. So that says if M is equal to the tangent of that angle, which means that the angle is going to be the inverse tan of 5 upon 4. And then when you look that up, it comes to 51.34 and so on, which is 51.3 degrees, and it said specifically express your answer in degrees, because otherwise, going by the expressions, you'd have given your answer in radians. So, answer, 51.3 degrees, and it was an acute angle, so I didn't need to go refer to this diagram. And that's paper one finished.